Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Kevin Williams Jr. And I'm First Lady Amara Williams. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ and we invite you to watch our sermons and Bible studies that it may be uplifting to you. And please visit our website, gbwtalbn.org. And remember, we, we love, love you in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Tonight we will be dealing with the Holy Spirit. This is part two. Let me go ahead and say a prayer and we get started. Family Father, we thank you for the opportunity for another day. We pray, Lord, that you continue to help us with our walk. And um, we're praying for our children and all those essential workers that are still going out in the midst of this chaos. We're praying for our leadership. And we're praying that we learn something tonight and help us to understand the importance of having the Holy Spirit and how to function in the Spirit and not in the flesh. Pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Sister Keisha Simpson, who is our media director. And I thank my wife, <coughs> First Lady of Marlborough Wins, when we're at home. Generally, she is the other one on the end helping me uh, with these videos for Bible study or any other type of presentation, we come from a virtual perspective. So I thank First Lady for assisting me um, as well with this media ministry. Um, tonight, you only have seven passages of scripture. We won't be holding you long, but once again, we wanna make sure that we're sharing this with our family and friends on social media. Um, that we can get the word out. Spread the word. It's time uh, to fill these pews up, fill these seats in the church. We will be going back to the church very soon um, for Bible study as well. And eventually we add back Sunday school. St. Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 through 33. It's in red, so that means Jesus said Wherefore I say unto you, all matter of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto man. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto man. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, which is Jesus, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt for the tree is known by its fruit this is a very stiff penalty for those individuals that speak blasphemy to the Holy Spirit it's very important to know that every word in the Bible is inspired by the Holy Spirit. So we have to be very canny, very careful when we speak against, mock the Holy Spirit. And um, we need to understand that blasphemy against the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is probably one of the only sins like you can debate suicide if you want because it's hard to repent from killing yourself if you're not um, able to repent because you're already gone but blasphemy for our scripture and what's written in the Bible is one of the only against the Holy Ghost is one of the only unforgivable sins also add into the Bible putting trying to put something in the Bible that's not even there um, um, and I'm not even gonna get in that because I can go in a whole direction and that's what we come from the King James Version um, this is a study Bible so it has this concordance and remarks. Um, but at the end of the day, 
all those different versions of the Bible that's adding stuff, changing stuff, raw interpretations, uh, supporting the, these new fleshly thoughts of how our world is today. To me, in my interpretation, that is borderline, if not straight up blasphemy. When you change the Bible to please the flesh. Let's go to St. John chapter 16, verse 13 through 14. For all those that's with us, we thank you or that will view this. Thank you for being with us for our Bible study tonight. St. John chapter 16, verses 13 through 14. This is also Jesus Christ. It is in red. The Bible reads, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit. So we have to also be careful when we try to force things to be representative of the Holy Spirit when it's not. Because if it's not true, it's not the Holy Spirit. We have to be careful when we try to force worldly agendas, worldly point of views, and try to put it together in a word of God. That's why I encourage, and we just coming off a fast, hopefully people are making changes in 2022. Because if you want doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and expecting a different result is a definition of insanity. Um, I'm not perfect. I got flaws. Things I need to work on. But we need to, as so-called, quote-unquote, Christians, saints, believers, children of God, we need to spend more time functioning in the spirit. You cannot function in the spirit if you're not making time for God. And I understand that a lot of us that were, that were able to work, we adjusted our work schedule to not going to church not praying as much, which we all should have been praying in the pandemic. Um, not fasting. For those of us that was able to work, we just worked and worked and worked uh, because a lot of churches were closed. Um, some of the ministries carried virtual, some didn't. But now we're coming back into a place that you can see that every day that we're moving closer and closer to coming out of this pandemic. And the Holy Spirit will let you know. See, we, we focus our culture, our ethnic group, so much on what other people is doing. The Holy Spirit will have you looking in, in, into yourself. What are you doing wrong and what do you need to change? The Bible even talks in the New Testament about quenching the Holy Spirit. See, having the Holy Spirit is supposed to bring God into you and give you an extra conscience when you know wrong from right. And it's not just knowing wrong or right, I shouldn't cuss, I shouldn't do this, blah, blah. Also, your decisions that you make, it should be something 
when you make a decision, it should be something there saying, how does God feel about this decision? When you have the Holy Spirit. That's why it's important to function it. Let's go to Romans chapter 15, verse 13. God bless you, uh, God, Brother Victor. Been very supportive to this ministry, especially from a virtual standpoint. Praying for him, a, a young man that's dedicated to supporting God's work. Romans chapter 15, verse 13, the Bible reads, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost or the power of the Holy Spirit. Our hope is in God. It's not in man. It's in God. Men will make mistakes because we dwell in flesh. And the Bible says no good thing dwells in flesh. That's why having the Holy Spirit is important. Our hope is in a whole different level of the individuals in this world just walking around almost like the walking dead. No salvation. Eternal life is bliss. Our hope is in God. And it deals here with joy and peace. The Holy Spirit will bring a joy to you. The Bible even says that God will be peace in the middle or in the midst of a storm. Although all these things going on in the world, every time we turn around, there's another negative report. God has brought peace to me. In this storm. Now he's also giving me a vision. And if I could get my church on the cord of the vision, I believe we can do some real damage. But once again, I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. Although we didn't see we just celebrated a few weeks ago, and we're going. We're in Black History Month now. Um, we didn't see Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. speak in tongues, although it's um, one of his associates said that he did hear him. I wasn't there. Way before my time, I I, I have come to and, and uh, my mentor told me, one of, one of the bishops, that he believes that he also was led by the Holy Ghost in his decision making as far as leading the civil rights during the time of his leadership. I um, mean, we have to understand that the work that he did, he did not make it to his 40th birthday. So he was a young man. The Holy Spirit will lead you to where you need to be. And if it was ever a time that we need to be led by the Holy Spirit, it's right now. Because if the blind lead the blind, they'll fall in the ditch. And I don't know if we have any viewers outside the state of Michigan. In Michigan, we got a lot of potholes. And I'm being rather facetious, but there's a lot of uh, traps that the devil set 
and we fall right into it. I try to educate individuals. And some of the stuff Bishop Collins was teaching on it. I'm not really teaching on it, but he mentioned it in one of his uh, previous Bible studies. Information that I shared, people got emotional, come out to be factual. The Holy Spirit will also um, give you the gift of discernment. It's supposed to raise your antenna where you can see the devil. Why shouldn't God bless you, uh, Ed Fry? Well, God will give you the sermon so you know, well, I, I probably don't need to go over there. Or I probably don't need to talk to her. I probably don't need to talk to him. Because uh, that's the whole point of the Holy Ghost, is to help you. The Holy Ghost is not supposed to hurt you. It's supposed to help you. Let's go 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. All those joining in, thank you for joining. If you want to donate, I believe the cash app is in the description. And we're going to get these donation letters out. I do want to add the graphic of at least putting a logo on these uh, gift letters. We're thankful for everybody that has given to this ministry. We paid off our church last year. Uh, we're just so thankful and blessed to be in a position during the pandemic. But we still have bills. We got a van that's been on the side of our house for almost a year now. Needs some work. It's a church van. It's a 15-seater, but it needs some work. And some other things that we got plans in place. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. The Bible reads, what? Question mark. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. This is why you hear your parents, um, old school apostolics, uh, girls, females, not allowed to really get their ears pierced. A lot of them was clip-ons. Uh, or they will at least say that. Uh, or they may encourage you not to get tattoos in your younger age because this body that we're in is a temple, is a reflection of God. Uh, that's why we believe in um, sanctification um, or representation. Holy Spirit will not have uh, a woman coming to church Acknowledge that Jesus is God, repented for her sins, baptized in water in Jesus' name, filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and come into church with see-through ligands where you can see everything. That's The Holy Spirit will not lead you to do that. And the same thing goes for man. I know that wearing tight pants is in style. Never been a part of my wardrobe, but I did get a rather a tight fitted suit for my brother-in-law's wedding, but I mean, some of these guys is wearing their pants so tight you can see the address on their license through the wallet that's in their back pocket. I, I don't believe the Holy Spirit would lead a, lead a man to do that because that's acting unseemingly. And that's something that the Holy Ghost would not lead. We have to get back to standards. We can't just do everything, say everything, be around everything, participate in everything. We can't. The world is full of destruction. The Bible says the, the devil is like a roaring lion going around seeking whom he may devour. That means that there is, like I said, traps. There is um, temptation rapidly if it's not already formed forming around us around us the devil knows your vices now the devil can't read your mind this is why sometimes we need to meditate in our prayers and also why God has given us the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues it's a heavenly tongue that's only interpreted from a heavenly perspective so only God truly knows what you're saying. And sometimes we don't even know what to pray for. 
But God knows, the Holy Spirit knows what we need to pray for. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. Only a few more scriptures and we're going to prepare to close out. I promise you that this Bible study will not be long. This is Holy Spirit part two. We are in our salvation series. Probably only two more Bible studies dealing with the Holy Spirit. Salvation is important. If you haven't repented, you need to repent. If you haven't been baptized in water in Jesus' name, you need to be baptized in water. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, I'm urging you that we can pray with you that God will bless you with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes a difference in your life. But for us that have the Holy Spirit, we got to function in it. It's not just good to have it. Function in it. That you will be able to use the gift. It's a gift that God has given us. That you'll be able to use the gift that God has given us. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, the Bible reads, but the fruit of the Spirit, which maybe we'll get to this in 2022. There's so many different Bible studies that we touch on. I have taught on this. So now we're dealing with the, what fruits comes forth when one has the Holy Spirit. We should be able to see, especially if you didn't have the Holy Spirit and now you have it and we know you before, we should be able to see some fruits manifest. And I'm not saying you will be perfect, but I'm saying we should see these characteristics. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. We need to display love. We need to display joy, peace. We need to understand there is long suffering in some of our trials and tribulations we face. Gentleness, goodness, faith. None of this is going to work without faith. And as a pastor, uh, working in leadership with the state, and working close to our diocese bishop, and eventually I will be um, leading a district. Sometimes my faith is, I'm going to be honest with you, my faith is not where it needs to be. But that's why the importance of praying and fasting. Like I said, we just came off a fast. A fast is set in place for discipline. We have to discipline ourselves. We have to discipline our mind. Um, we have to discipline our body. And we have to discipline our wallets, our bank accounts. Because if we just spend all our money, I know some of us get caught up. With Amazon, we just order everything. Anything we see, order, 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 order. That comes out your bank account. You got to have discipline. And off the top, dealing with tithes and offering, 10% goes to God. Off top, before you do anything. We shouldn't put anything over. Well, I'm going to take my tithes. I got a project over here. Or I got some back bills uh, that I need to pay, that they're not even asking for you to pay them. You just arbitrarily thinks it's in a, it's a, that's a fleshly thought. See, when you bless God, he will bless you back tenfold, hundredfold. I'm a living witness. Um, was it 2020? 2020, January, I was able to get in this marriage, this relationship, as a pastor, my first new vehicle since pastor. I had been in the same vehicle while watching all my friends and family buy new cars, new trucks, and I'm driving the same vehicle, working sometimes six, seven days a week. But God blessed me. 
God bless you, Minister Lamb. Thank you for joining in. Then last year, 2021, my work vehicle was breaking down. I was pushing it to the limits. And plus I wanted to give it to somebody that needed it, like my brother. Um, and I gave that vehicle to my brother and I was able to get another car, 2021. Unexpectedly, uh, I was able to get another new vehicle um, this year in January. So I don't know if it's a trend where God is blessing me, but that came off of me giving. Now, I'm not going to speak um, from a racial standpoint, even though this is black history, but uh, in this neighborhood or the area of Albion, Michigan that we live in, it's not a lot of us that look like us. So being led by the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, my wife is not, a, uh, first lady's not a privilege spinner. Uh, we pay our bills. I'm not a privilege spinner. I go to work, come home. That's being led by the Holy Spirit. Also, my father, Kevin Williams Sr. taught me that. Just go to work, bring your money home. Go to work, bring your money home. This is being led by the Holy Spirit because there's a lot of things that we can do with the money. Money's filthy lucre. And even then, people mess up the, the scriptures. They said money is the root of all evil. No. Money is a tool that we all need. God bless you, evangelist, uh, Virgil, Miscue, Christ Temple Church in Muskegon Heights. Apologize if I butchered your name, but it's the love of money. I've come to a, um, a thought that yeah, I need money, but I'm not going to love it. I'm going to use it as a tool. So I'm going to take it, pay off the church. I'm going to take it, put it, invest in a house, sell the house, buy another house, make money with that. Um, so we got to be led by the Holy Spirit in our decisions. And, and, and a lot of us are not, I'm not seeing the fruit as we just went over the fruits. So I am not, the decisions that we're making is very poor, very poor for our health. I'm talking about physical. Very poor in our diet. We've been watching uh, what they're telling us. Important to understand the vaccination, that's your choice. But there's other things we need to do that me and my wife have changed. We've took red meat out of our daily diet. I've been taking vitamins. And I ain't taking no vitamins since I was a kid. Flintstone vitamins. Been taking all these vitamins. I used to drink a, a, at least a gallon of soda every day. I stopped drinking soda, stopped drinking pop, lost all this weight. Being led by the Spirit is not just one element. The Holy Spirit will lead you in your decisions. We need to make wise decisions, not foolish decisions. And if we have spare time and we're part of church, use it to evangelize. Use it to check on the other members that may not be as strong as you or you may have not saw them in church lately. The body of Christ is just not you and your family only. The body of Christ is everybody that is saved. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 through 14. May be veering off the topic, but at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is massive. And it also is influential in everything we do. If we got it. If you ain't got it, I encourage you to get to an altar. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. The Bible reads, In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believe ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. The Holy Spirit of promise. I've been praying, fasting, seeking God. I really believe. Maybe I'm wrong, but I believe in my heart of heart, my spirit, my soul, 
we are coming out of this pandemic. I feel it. I'm feeling as soon as this weather break, I feel it. And we need to not confuse the flu and the cold, which still exists, even though we're not hearing nothing about it with COVID-19 or the coronavirus. What are you going to change? You've been on so-called lockdown, mandates, right? Stuck in our house, secluded to our jobs if we got one. We lost so much people, money, jobs, houses, cars, businesses. What are you going to change? Churches. What has the Holy Spirit told you personally you need to change? Maybe your pastor even said something. Did you receive what your pastor say? Now somebody like me, I need to work on saying it in love, but it's still a revelation I received from God if I told you something. If I told you something, I, I interpret as it came from God. And I would never tell nobody to jump off a bridge. And I would never tell nobody to give me all their money. But I will try to help you. And what I know what's going on. Because guess what? Somebody help me. Last scripture we're going to prepare to close out. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Everybody that is apostolic definitely should know this. Or Pentecostal for that matter, because it's day of Pentecost. And hopefully we have been a blessing with these scriptures, but it's very important. The Holy Spirit is very important. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to function in the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, come to our church. Meet us there this Sunday at 11, 15 a.m. I don't care if it's snow. I would do my best to shovel. You can park right, pull up right there. Saul to be down. We can go and worship, praise God, praise team, sing preach the word and let God continue to do miracles in that part of the vineyard. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 Then Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins that mean to be removed and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's Apostle Peter the New Testament, the first New Testament presiding bishop, the leader of the disciples in fact, he was in the room when they made the decisions to extend it, the invitation of salvation to the Gentiles. And Peter was not perfect. Peter cussed out the guards because when they came and got Jesus, they asked Peter, is you with them? He cussed them out. He also, when they came and got Jesus, sliced one of the guards' ear off. So that Peter wasn't perfect. God continued to work with him. He went through his trials and tribulations. If you notice the faults that Jesus pointed out, during the time of his earthly mission, he always dealt with their faith. Their faith wasn't on point. So we all have a chance. If you can hear my voice, if you can see this video, which I'm asking you to share, which if we're trying to save people, God didn't just come to save you only by yourself. You still have a chance to get it right. But let us hide these scriptures in our heart. We thank you for tuning in. This has been Holy Spirit Part 2, part of our salvation series. We want you to know that we love you, but most important, God loves you. God bless you. Until next time.